Right below the coupons button, you will find one of the most in-demand digital products in the online creator economy, which are courses. This is one of our main features here in Systems.io. In fact, most of our users host their courses with our platform and sell them with our integrated funnels. To create a new course, just click on add a new course and fill out your course information. So first you would give your course a name or title, then add the name of the instructor. This could be you or whoever is teaching the lessons. Then choose a language for your course. After that, you can add a description if you want to further explain what the course is about. Then you would choose the domain for your course. So if you're new to the platform and have not connected a custom domain yet, you will see a subdomain like this one. But if you do have your own domain, you can connect it to your system.io account and then it will show up here on this list. After that, you can customize the URL path for your course. You can use your course name or whatever path you feel is best for your course's homepage. Then we get to the more visual part of the course. You will be asked to select a theme, and this is the color that your students will see predominantly when they go through the lesson. So let's choose green, for example. You can choose the color that best fits your brand, and then you can choose a font that will be used across all the different text sections of your course. Don't worry too much about this font because you can edit each lesson space and change the fonts there as well. Next, you will be asked to upload a logo and this is the logo that your students will see when they access the course and it will be located in the top left corner of their menu. And then for the cover, this one will be displayed on their student dashboard. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, we will find a very important part of the initial settings, which is the sales page. And this is the place where you would choose the page within system.io that actually is selling your course. So this is a page inside one of your funnels. And it's really important because remember, we have this link. If someone uses this link and they are not enrolled or registered to your course, they'll be prompted with a button to buy the course. And the URL on this button will redirect them to the sales page that you choose here. After that, there's a little checkbox where you can decide either to show or hide your module's titles. That really depends on you, but we recommend showing them if that is something that will help your students. At the very bottom, you will find a space to add a code on the footer of your course. You can use it to add a Facebook pixel or any other type of tracking. After all of this is filled out, just click on save and your course will be created. When you first create your course, it will appear inactive. In order to activate it, just go to the three dot menu, click on activate and confirm. Once activated, if someone has access to it, they will be able to see it in their student dashboard. Now let's take a look inside the course. Courses are made up of modules and modules contain lectures. So let's start by adding a module and call it module one. You can name it however you want. And then if you expand that module, you'll have the option to start adding lectures or lessons to it. You will see a pop-up where you will name your lecture and choose a template for it. Right now we have three options to choose from. But keep in mind, you can edit them completely later on. Then click on save and keep adding your other lectures. Then you can add another module, for instance, with more lectures. And you can make it as long as you want, depending on your course topic. As you can see, even though the course is active, the individual lectures are not active. So once you are done editing the content and you want them to be available to your students, again, go to the three top menu and click activate. So now that I activated all the lectures, Let's see how it looks. Just click on the eye icon to preview, and this is how it looks. This is where you'll see the instructor's name and picture. This profile picture is actually added in the account settings. Now here's the logo that we added in the beginning. And of course, our green theme is all around. In order to move through the lessons, your students can click directly on the one they want here on the left, and they'll be able to see the content of those lectures. Now to add content to the lectures, just click on it and it will take you directly to the editor. This editor is very similar to our funnel editor and works exactly the same way. You would just drag and drop the elements that you need. Once you're happy with your design, you can save the changes and exit. Remember, you can also save blocks here so you can use them across all your lectures without having to create them one by one on each one. Now let's talk about delays. So we can actually add delays for each lecture. You would use this if you want to give access to your course, but not to all the lectures at the same time. Maybe you pre-sold your course and you're still building it, so you want to give access to a new lecture every seven days. Or maybe you just want your students to go at the same pace, 
So to do that, just go to the settings of the lecture and add your delay. Let's say that's going to be seven days. This means when the students access the course, they will have immediate access to the first lecture. And then after seven days, they will be able to see the second one. And if we add another delay here for the next module, let's say five days, that, that means they'll get access to the first lecture of the second module five days after the last one. There's something very important to note here, and that is that in order for these delays to work, you must choose to drip your content when selecting your course's access type. This is selected in the order form settings of the funnel where, where you you'll be selling the course. If you don't choose drip, but instead leave it as full access, then these delays that you add here will not work. Another important aspect to remember is that delays always depend on the previous step. This means that the seven days that we put here will start counting from the day the student accesses the first lecture. And then the five days that we put here means it's five days after getting access to the last lecture, which was the second one. Now, there are actually two ways for your students to access your course. The first one is buying your course. And the second one is for you to manually add them and grant access to the course. To do it manually, you would just click here on add student, and then you would add your student's name, last name, email address, and access type. Since we added delays for our lectures, then we must choose to drip the content if we want the delays to work. If not, we can either grant them full access or partial access. For partial access, you can actually choose which modules to give access to, and then click on save.